like a river attendeth my way when sorrows like sea billows roll whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say but it is well it is well Satan should tempt And though trials should come Let this blessed assurance control That Christ has regarded my helpless estate
Hello, everyone. Welcome to Monday of the 24th week, uh, the week of our feast day on Thursday, our Mother of Sorrows. And today's the feast of the holy name of Mary. Mary's name is holy, like Jesus' name. And in the liturgy, it, uh, it invites us to bow our heads when we say the name of Mary, the same way we bow our heads when the name is saying the name of Jesus. So anyway, today we celebrate her holy name. And it is truly a holy, holy name, the same as uh, the name of Jesus. And, and, and actually has a certain power to it, that holy name of Mary. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's ask God for his mercy. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Your Son of God and Son of Mary, Christ, have mercy. Your Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant we pray, Almighty God, that for all who celebrate the glorious name of the Blessed Virgin Mary, she may obtain your merciful favor through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, in giving this instruction, I do not praise the fact that your meetings are doing more harm than good. First of all, I hear that when you meet as a church, there are divisions among you. And to a degree, I believe it. There have to be factions among you in order that also those who are approved among you may become known. When you meet in one place, then, it is not to eat the Lord's Supper. For in eating, one goes ahead with his own supper, and one goes hungry while another gets drunk. Do you not have houses in which you can eat and drink? Or do you show contempt for the church of God and make those who have nothing feel ashamed? What can I say to you? Shall I praise you? In this matter, I do not praise you, for I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body. That is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, when you come together to eat, Wait for one another. The word of the Lord. open to obedience you gave me. Burnt offerings or sin offerings you sought not. Then said I, Behold, I come. for me. To do your will, O oh my God, is my delight, and your law is within my heart. I announce your justice in the vast assembly. I did not restrain my lips, as you, O oh Lord, know. Those who love your salvation say ever, the Lord be glorified. Yeah. 
the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus had finished all his words to the people, he entered Capernaum. A centurion there had a slave who was ill and about to die. And he was, va and he was valuable to him. When he heard about Jesus, he sent elders of the Jews to him, asking him to come and save the life of his slave. They approached Jesus and he strongly and strongly urged him to come, saying, He deserves to have you do this for him, for he loves our nation and he built a synagogue for us. And Jesus said to them, and, and Jesus went with them, and, and when he uh, was only a short distance away from the house, the centurion sent friends to tell him, Lord, don't trouble yourself, for I'm not worthy to have you enter under my roof. Therefore, I did not consider myself worthy to come to you myself. But say the word, and my servant will be healed. For I too my person under authority, with soldiers subject to me. And I say to one, go, and he goes. And I say to another, come here, and he comes. And to my slave, do it, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed at him. And turning, he said to the crowd following him, I tell you, I tell you, not even in Israel have I found such faith. When the messenger returned to the house, they found a slave in good health. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I got to tell you, folks, this reading has always puzzled me. And, and I, I, being not a military guy myself, I didn't get something. So let me give you an image, if I can, to start off with. Imagine, imagine a soldier is walking slowly through the woods, and his job is to protect these villagers from terrorists in every single step. Uh, um, he takes, has his own danger attached to it. And suddenly, he gets on his radio a call from his commanding officer. They know where the terrorists are hiding. And so he commands him to go there immediately, and he does. He moves, obeys instantly, and he goes to get the job done, protect the villagers, and he's been trained to obey without question instantly in his life. Now, most of us, myself included, all right, don't, uh, don't live under such clear and demanding authority. But military people do. And we got to understand this to be understand the gospel here today. Now, Jesus, I think, would, would obey his father quite like that, that, that kind of uh, uh, immediate uh, uh, response to authority. That would be Jesus in many ways. I hope he, I'm getting better at all that myself. But here's the thing I want to say to you. This uh, uh, um, um, story is not about this slave at all. The slave is, is not the big issue here. It's the centurion. He's the key. And how he acts as a military guy is really key to the story here today. Now, a centurion, the middle-ranking uh, military officer from uh, uh, Rome, and he knows a world of absolute obedience and instant response. Now, here's Jesus completely astonished by his faith. This man absolutely believes when Jesus commands something to be done, it's done. When Jesus commands sin to be gone, it's gone. When Jesus commands sickness to be gone, it's gone. He really believes that, and he sees, uh, and Jesus sees this, uh, what this man believes about Jesus. He believes it's not Jesus' way. He believes about his commanding officer, he believes even more about Jesus than that. And this astonishes Jesus. He's quite amazed at this. This is pretty amazing. So much so that uh, his uh, Jewish brethren, while they're trying to still figure Jesus out or they outright reject him, here is this centurion. Now, here's an interesting image of God uh, the centurion places upon Jesus. I don't think I'd ever have that image of God of Jesus being this ultimate commanding officer that when things say something when things are there and he commands them to go hey, they're gone and he believes that with all he has and here's the second part of all this now folks let's suppose uh jesus is a fraud uh this centurion is ruined i mean all his subjects around him are questioning jesus some of them rejecting him outright and here he is putting everything he has on jesus being that kind of a guy that's 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 that that powerful that he commands something it's gone and if Jesus is a fraud he's ruined 
So he's putting a lot on the line here. He's risking a great, great deal by doing this. But this is what he believes. And his image of God, image of Jesus as this commanding officer that demands absolute trust, an instant response. This is his faith. This is how he sees it. And it's honorable. And Jesus is fired up because this guy really does believe in his own military kind of a way. But he really does believe and he honors him for all of that. Does that make sense, folks? I always struggle with this gospel a little bit, not understanding that, but I think I get a little bit better as I prepared all this for, for you. Here's my question for today, my big question. Is Jesus Lord of your life, our life, uh, or is he not? Do I respond to Jesus that way? Is he the commanding officer of my life? God bless you. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you again tomorrow as we get closer to closer to our Feast of Our Mother of Sorrows. Goodbye now.